Welcome back. We are finally going on shore leave. It's been talked about a lot in this game so far. And it's finally happening. So all we need to do is visit some museum. Listen to some dignitaries. Drink some cognac. It'll be an easy time. Still, that's uh, no reason not to research where we're going. Um, we're going to Nova... Nova Atar. Nova Atar, a Federation system whose third planet, Nova Atar 3, is the home of the Smithsonian Annex for this sector of the galaxy. Nova Atar is renowned for its rich collection of artifacts. We were also told about the uh, Saran Sea. I don't think that's how you spell it. This way. Saran Sea. A large, influential extended family among several controlling Lockean. Cross-reference entry, Lockean. All right, let's do that. Lockean. Governed by large extended families, the inhabitants of this world escaped a dying planet several generations ago to relocate to Lockean. After a troubled period of re-establishment of their culture and industrial base, the Lockeans recently petitioned for admittance into the Federation. All right, sounds pretty interesting. I see no reason to expect trouble. All sensors are clear, Captain. Okay, that um, is good to know. No word from Nova Atar, Captain. Maybe we should just go there. Uh, um, let's see, Nova Atar is number 16, which is in the bottom left. We've arrived at Nova Atar, Captain. Bring us into standard orbit, Mr. Sue. Aye, Captain. We are at Nova Atar. Indeed we are. Curator Bresnia bids you to beam down at your pleasure. All right, I guess we will. Scott, Mr. Chekhov, come with me, Mr. Spock, you have the car. Captain Kirk, good to meet you. I am Boris Bresnia, curator of the museum. Everyone is buzzing about visitors from the Enterprise. A real feather in my cap. Um, the pleasure is ours, sir. This is my chief engineer, Mr. Scott, and Ensign Chekhov, our navigator. Most pleased to meet you both. Chekhov, a fine name. I'm certain you will be interested in sampling the Kazakhstanian cognac, distilled and blended by my family. In fact, I will later show you my most prized possession, a bottle of our finest vintage, aged 40 years from our very first press. But isn't cognac French? Originally, Mr. Scott. But before my ancestors came to settle this planet, they went to cognac and purchased cuttings, brought them here, and made Enhancements. You could say we reinvented cognac. I do not wish to be rude, but you gentlemen are a bit early, and I must see to making certain the cleaning crews are finished working. Please feel free to look about a bit. I will page you later, and maybe you will join me in a small toast before the ceremonies. Yes. It would be our pleasure, curator. Okay. I told you we invented it. Maybe we were a little hard on you, laddie. Never doubted you for a second, Mr. Chekhov. Now let's take advantage of this time and look around. Guess it's the one time he's right. Yes, we have a little bit of time to... Uh, to look around the uh, museum before the curator calls us back. I believe we have uh, nothing with us. So we were told not to bring any electronics. So our inventory is empty, so we can just look at things. We can't scan anything, which will certainly speed things up. The plaque reads, an old ground-based phaser cannon model B-17, the real equalizer, rescued from a Federation scrapyard, probably based on the frontier near Nelapur. This phaser cannon no longer possesses any of its focusing or targeting equipment. The large capacitors in the base allowed a variety of power sources 
to be used to energize the cannon and gave the real equalizer considerable flexibility in use. Is that a reference to... I think it was the coal that was called the equalizer? Not entirely sure. I'm European, I don't know anything about guns. The Klingon console looks operational, but without a ship attached, it's hard to tell. Written on the plaque, this is a control console from a Klingon warbird, the Klarg, which was salvaged from the battle wreckage near Crimmins 8. Think you could make that work, Mr. Scott? Of course, Captain. But it's not like I'll ever have to. No, why would he ever need to do that? Lights cascade continually above the surface of this device. Plaques on each side read, The Vandicourt Aurora Generator was donated to this museum by Sir William Loudon. Originally, a university experiment designed to test broadcast power as both a containment system and photostimulation for possible use in a propulsion system, the unit was presented as a gift to Loudon, who liked the way it looked and had recently donated a significant sum to the university. And here I thought it was an air hockey table. The plaque reads, The Niven, non-integrated Vulcan electronumerator, was one of the earliest versions of a Vulcan computer. Some of the components were found to only function correctly at high temperatures. Since the focus in those early days was on computational effectiveness and not user friendliness, the operator could not stand near the Niven during its operation. Input to the machine was cabled in from a separate device. Hence, it was a non-integrated computer. Interesting design. Kirk seems to be enjoying the leisurely stroll around the museum. It's quite a difference from what we usually do, that's for sure. Scotty thinks this is the best shore leave he's ever had. That's just because of the cognac, isn't it? Chekhov is pleased to finally be with someone from his ancestral culture. Also, to finally be right about something that Russians invented, I guess. Um, it's kind of nice that we get uh, different crew members again. This time, Scotty and Chekhov got to share the limelight. I actually uh, saw James Doohan at a convention in the 90s. Didn't really get to talk to him or anything, but he seemed pretty nice. I imagine this is how you decorate your home, Mr. Scott. Aye, Captain. But I'd leave all the parts in. Most of this has been gutted. You know, this is a fine place, Captain. We'll have to come here for shore leave more often. Maybe they'll display a piece of the Enterprise here someday, Captain. Maybe they will, Mr. Chekhov. They'd better not. Taking a piece out of that grand lady would be like cutting the head from the statue of the Antares Maiden and putting that on display. Interesting analogy, Mr. Scott. But you have to admit that someday, even the Enterprise will be put into dry dock. He will not. I think we'll agree with Mr. Scott on this one, don't you think, Mr. Chekhov? Yes, Captain. She could be put to dry dock. Unless somebody blows her up first, you know. But why would that happen? Alright, let's just check the next room. This EVA suit was worn by Ivan Petrovsky, a late 21st century Terran astronaut during the famous Commonwealth mission. Petrovsky used this suit to dock with the damaged spacecraft SS Commonwealth and save the vessel from certain destruction in orbit around Mars. Petrovsky? Isn't that a Russian name? I don't think so, Mr. Chekhov. I sincerely doubt it, laddie. Really? I would have sworn it was Russian. Could be Polish, I guess? Not entirely sure. The plaque on the old machine reads, an early experimental transporter. The Murnane 8 was from a time before transporters were safe for travel by living beings. Constructed to be a frequently modified test bed, the Murnane 8 had only a small loading bay. The destination controls were also still in testing, making the use of this transporter as much art as science. That must have predated the transporter aboard the Enterprise NX-01, I guess. The plaque reads, 
one of the most widely used and most stable designs ever. The Umber Hubble Mark 84 has been used in far more ships than any other model. Captain Kirk, I trained on one of these. It's solid as a rock and twice as dependable. Remind me after the ceremony, I'll talk to the curator about letting you look this one over. Thank you, Captain. I'd dearly love to put it through its paces. Maybe we'll get the chance to do that? An old communications panel on the plaque. This communication station was removed off the old freighter, Big Bear Running, when that ship was retired from its customary Benchley to Sawcare run. Outdated by today's standards, this system was known for its powerful transmitter and ease of repair. As a side note, the shell of the Big Bear Running was used as a testing target for present models of photon torpedoes. Okay. Why not? Chekhov thinks this is interesting, but that he's too young to be spending his shore leave in a stuffy old museum. His places he'd rather be, I guess? Kirk realizes this is probably heaven to Scotty, but this isn't his favorite type of history. I would love Captain this kind Kirk of Captain Kirk and party, please report to the curator's office, please. Captain Kirk and party, please report to the curator's office. I guess that's as far I as we'll get. I enjoyed your tour, gentlemen. Please join me. Would you mind if the first toss with the Kazakhstanian was to the Enterprise? Curator, why isn't that Bresnian cognac? For heaven's sakes, Chekhov, don't interrupt a man on the verge of toasting the best ship in the fleet with the finest cognac on this side of the galaxy. My apologies. Questions later, then. The toast. Here's to the Starship Enterprise. Uh, that doesn't look good. What could this be? A conspiracy, if you ask me, Captain. Let me pull this up on screen. <laughs> They've destroyed my camera. Well, let's see how they deal with our other security systems. Um, I think they dealt with them just fine. I'm assuming that wasn't supposed to happen. Looks like we have trouble after all. Who could have predicted that? Somebody has invaded the museum. And apparently um, shocked the curator. So, we should probably do something about that. Fortunately, we don't have a medical tricorder or a medkit or Dr. McCoy. So, we're uh, kind of stuck here, aren't we? Let's just see what Kirk can do. I wish Bones were here. He's out, but I can't tell you how bad it is. Indeed. I guess... Uh, there's not much we can do. Ignoring the slight ozone odor, the curator looks peacefully asleep. Well, hopefully he's not seriously injured. Captain Kirk. Wherever he goes, trouble seems to be waiting. That does seem to be true. The chief engineer was looking forward to an idyllic day. Sipping cognac and looking at old machinery. I guess we could still sip cognac, but may not be the best idea. Chekhov is determined to find out who would harm such a fine gentleman with ties to the old country. Then enjoy the rest of his shore leave. Yes, we have to figure out what's going on here first. Look around, gentlemen. Let's see if we can find something to solve this little mystery. I do not know what we should do next, Captain. Maybe I can wring some information out of that security panel. This is not quite the shore leave I expected, Captain. Indeed. Well, I was kind of expecting it. Come on. This wouldn't be in the game if nothing would uh, would happen. Oh, I guess they didn't know that. Um, yeah, maybe Scotty can look at that console, hopefully without electrocuting himself. I trust Mr. Scott. 
Not much of a trap, really. Fixed it up with a wee change of wiring. Can you get any information from it, though? I've checked the system, Captain. Whoever sabotaged it did a fine job. All of the modules of the security system were cut off from each other when the curator tried to trigger the defenses. And I do not think I can repair from here. I wish we had more information. We don't know who they are, what they want, or how long we have to stop them. Those are all very good questions. Hopefully we'll be able to find some more answers. This glass birdhouse is the nesting place of a Brecknerian swallow. So not a European or an African swallow? An old suit of armor, but with a strong framework added inside to avoid any accidents. It's holding a large metal lance in its right gauntlet. Just looking around the room before we do anything else. An enormous bottle of cognac. The plaque below reads, This Jeroboam of Kazakhstanian cognac is from the first blending and 40-year aging on Nova Atar. I guess that's good. A solid-looking door with no handles. Can we leave? Security lockdown in effect. Please enter release code. Um, it's ABC. Incorrect access code. Access denied. Security lockdown in effect. Please enter release code. I bet it's password. Incorrect access code. Access denied. Well, it was worth a try. A small, tantalizing goblet of cognac waiting for the warm touch of Mr. Scott's hand to gently release its vapors. Okay. Finely crafted silver serving tray. A nearly full decanter of cognac. Can we actually drink the cognac? Scotty, we've got work to do. Seemed like a crime to waste it, Captain. I guess he can. The curator's desk. Neat. Organized. That seems to be all. The curator's desk. A small conference table and chairs. A small comp. Uh, let's see if we can find some way out of here. Maybe we can get some of the stuff. The security console was no help. We do anything with the armor? The large lance shows somewhere. Yeah, I guess we can take the lance with us. A rather worn lance. Can we get the cognac? I feel rather bad about this, Captain. I do too, Scotty, but it's always surprising what you need in an emergency. Indeed. Um, Kirk's kind of in the way. There's something underneath the bottle. The note on the paper reads, Bresnia, VVSOP 2123. Interesting. I wonder what this is for. Could be the door code. Security lockdown in effect. Please enter release code. All right, VVSOP 2123. Security lock deactivated. That actually worked. Which is nice. But we were not done here. Because we can also get the um, silver tray. This is a very expensive silver tray. And... The decanter is nearly full. We can get the decanter as well. There's actually another way to open the door. Which is by using the... This is helpful. There's a button under the edge of the desk when the curator wants to open the door. 
I don't know if I could still do that. I can. Now normally if you don't have the lock activated, they will complain if you try to leave that the door would close behind them. And the way around that is to... Mr. Chekhov, see if you can wedge that knight under the door. Yes, Captain. It's to shove the knight under the door. <laughs> Which I guess technically isn't necessary since there, we that should hold the door open. Since we uh, used the code and were able to get back in, but hey, we could still do it. So now we can leave the room. We don't know where the um, intruders are. We don't know what room they're in. It is actually possible to get to the room that they're in if you're a little bit faster with looking around before the curator calls your, you back. I did not make it that far. So we'll just have to um, explore and hope we figure out where they are. Already looked at everything, so... Security lockdown is in effect. Please enter access code. Alright. We know what it is. Authorization code correct. Warning. Malfunction in security authorization. Access denied. It appears that the terrorists do not want any visitors. Going to assume the terrorists are in uh, that direction then. There's actually um, another room down this way. Actually, I'm assuming our talk descriptions will have changed since the situation is different. Kirk thinks that his friend Admiral Richards is going to owe him two favors after this is all over. Quite true. Scotty thinks the only thing worse than attacking this museum would be destroying the Enterprise. Chekhov is upset over what happened to that fine curator. Let's look around, gentlemen. Maybe we can come up with an idea. I'm open to suggestions. Captain, when you were in school, did you ever make a tennis ball cannon? Of course, Mr. Scott. It's a dormitory tradition. Empty cans, tape, and a little propellant. If I remember my formula... But what's that got to do with our situation? I was standing here looking at the cannon and thought maybe we could use the same idea to get through that wee door. You're going to knock down the door with a tennis ball? I'm sure Scotty had something else in mind. You did, didn't you, Mr. Scott? Aye, Captain. In an engineering dorm, that's for freshmen only. As you move along, you get into bigger and better versions. We'll use a big tennis ball? No, laddie. I was thinking since we cannot fix the phaser here, maybe we could build some sort of mass driver. The capacitors on the cannon can discharge a lot of power in a short burst. Oh, I remember. Using magnetic fields to propel an object faster and faster. We... Don't say it, laddie. You didn't invent them. Of course not. I was going to say we will need an iron tennis ball. True, I guess. Or anything made of metal, really. I don't think we have time to talk now, Captain. Well, that's as good an idea as any. So, we will need some of the uh, stuff from around here. For example, we can get the capacitors of this cannon. No effect. Or, I think Scotty can do that. The two capacitors in here would be perfect for handling the large power discharge we're going to need, Captain. So I've pulled the beasties out of the cannon. We know the table is some sort of power transfer field. So that might be useful too, especially since the two, these two capacitors are currently discharged. An old style phaser cannon capacitor. It is currently uncharged. And we can charge them in fact by putting them on the table. The capacitor should charge very quickly. Wanna do both of them? The capacitor should charge very quickly. Let's see if we can get something useful from any of these other machines. Well, 
but it's not like anyone's likely to be using this monstrosity soon, so I pulled out the only things we might be able to use. It's not much, only some heat-resistant wiring and a cable. Anything we can do with the Klingon console? I don't understand what you want me to do, Captain. It's working fine. Just doesn't have anything to control right now. Nothing we can do with it right now. Oh, looks like the capacitors are charged. I guess that's the sound that makes. An old style phaser cannon capacitor. It is currently charged. Well, we'll get those back for the Check time being. Chekhov takes the capacitor off of the Aurora generator. Chekhov takes the capacitor off of the Aurora generator. All right. I don't think we can get anything else here. Let's see if we can go this Security way. Security lockdown is in effect. Please enter access code. All right. Let's hope it works this time. Security lock deactivated. It did. We haven't been in this room before. The surface of the old docking ring is pitted from micrometeorite strikes, and there are several large welds running completely around it. Many magnetic coupling clamps are uniformly spaced around the ring. The plaque reads, This docking ring was recovered in pieces from the port facilities at Genevieve 9, where it was broken when a freighter, the Hardy, accidentally turned on its thrusters just before mooring was completed. You know, Captain, this looks like the rings we worked on during my cadet summer training assignment. Before or after the welds, Mr. Chekhov? There's a story in this, isn't there? Before or after the welds, Mr. Chekhov? There's a story in this, isn't there? Of course, Captain. Why else would I be talking? As I was saying, we worked with these type of rings. We were working in spacesuits outside the station, practicing maneuvering things around. When the instructors would take a break, we would line up several of the rings. After lining them up, we would float a piece of metal toward the first one. The trick was to turn on the magnets as the metal approached, so it would accelerate towards the hole. Then we turned off the magnets as it passed through. When this was done for each ring, the piece of metal would go very fast out the backside. Rather hard on the box, wasn't it? What box? We were in space. I'm talking about knocking down the door. The lad's got a good idea, Captain. If we cannot go around that big door, we can go through it. I thought that's what I said. Well, gentlemen, why are we standing here talking? It's especially since we already had that plan. The plaque reads, A failed experiment in Habis Robotics. The Green Mark VI was one of those ideas where the original concept might have been sound. But the follow-ups were too much. Planned as a simple cargo handler, attempts were made at increasing its function and therefore its flexibility. Unfortunately, proposed missions such as security were well beyond its recognition systems and processors. One small piece of lasting notoriety was that the Mark VI was one of the first Habis robotic uses of room temperature superconducting wiring. While the wiring concept went forward, Little else of this robot did. If we could make it run, maybe we could use it to force the door open. Interesting idea, Mr. Chekhov. We'll have to keep it in mind. Worth a try, I guess? See if the capacitor might power it up. Okay, it's doing something. That has to be one of the most useless robots I've ever seen. Badly designed, Captain. It's not going to help us, is it? Only in a dance contest, Mr. Chekhov. No. Yeah. That is, uh, pretty useless. Do anything else with that robot? This is not exactly my area of expertise. Alright, fine, Scott. 
There's no way anyone could fix this piece of junk, no matter how much time was available. But I did get some wires that may be helpful. Well, that's something. Did we got the capacitor back? No, we did not. Need to take that back too. You take the capacitor out of the robot. How about this thing? Low and sleek, this space vehicle has a Spartan look written on the plaque. This is the escape pod in which the famous smuggler known as the Black McKiernan was captured. Unable to outrun his pursuers, McKiernan tried to escape in the pod as he blew up his ship, hoping the authorities would think he had perished. The pod had been specially constructed of expensive metalloceramic alloys to withstand such an escape tactic. Unfortunately for McKiernan, the pursuit included a trailing scout ship looking for a backtracking maneuver. And when the smiling smuggler opened the hatch thinking he'd made planet fall, he was treated to the inside view of a Federation cruiser's shuttle bay. That would make a fine battering ram. Too bad we cannot possibly get it up to speed. Yeah, unfortunately. That will not serve our purposes. This was a sensor diagram from the Remembrance, an early Terran interstellar craft. Chekhov is secretly pleased that he got to come along on this adventure. Yeah, that's pretty rare for him. Scotty figures the only good thing that's coming out of this little adventure is that he gets to tinker with all the antiques. Yeah, he gets to take stuff apart and doesn't he have to, have to feel guilty about it. Captain Kirk does not think about escape. He thinks about solutions. But what if solutions involve escape? We have no time to waste. Let's get back to work. If we're going to get this done in time, Captain, we're going to have to put our backs into it. Have we gotten everything we need yet? It's a good question, Mr. Chekhov. Um, that's not what I want to do. Let's see if we can get anything from these other machines here. The magnetic clamps will be just the thing, Captain. Yes, we may not be able to use the rings themselves, but the clamps may serve the same purpose that Chekhov described in helping us build this mass driver. How about this thing? Everything on this pod's too tight. I need the proper tools. I was able to get one loose access panel, but I'm not sure what we can do with it. That's a good question. I guess that's this thing. A protective panel salvaged from an escape pod. No telling what we can actually use for that. This is just the note. The note on the paper reads, Bresnia. Yeah, it is. Just, just wondering. Um, I think that's all we can get from here. And I believe we have what we need to build our cannon. But we will do so in the next video.